Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Hello everyone, I am Katie Patrick, joined by David Fiorazzo, and it is time to drop boop, 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 knowledge on all of you. Well, Florida is looking to build upon its commitment to restoring real education by expanding a ban on lessons that push sexual orientation and gender identity in the classroom through high school. David, tell us a little bit about it. All right, let's go to Tallahassee for this one. Um, the administration of Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis, is moving to forbid classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity in all grades, expanding the controversial law that critics call, don't say gay, even though gay is nowhere in the bill, as the Republican governor continues a focus on cultural issues ahead of his expected presidential run. We have a video to set this up. The Parental Rights Education Act will be expanded to cover all grades, pre-K through 12, not just pre-K through third grade, which was approved by the legislature last year. Opponents of the bill call it the Don't Say Gay bill. It does not say Don't Say Gay anywhere in the bill's language, but says Florida educators shall not intentionally provide classroom instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity unless such instruction is either expressly required by state academic standards or as part of a reproductive health course or lesson for which a student's parent has the option to have their student not attend. Opponents argue this law does more harm for kids than good. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, and I've seen over the course of my career hundreds of LGBTQ plus youth, you know, come many of them who are struggling. And a lot of times the struggles happen because of their environment. Heather Wilkie is the executive director of Zebra Youth, a nonprofit that helps homeless and at risk LGBTQ plus youth. She says those students have a higher chance of depression, anxiety, and thoughts of suicide. And schools should be places where students can feel safe. The bill also says school districts must tell parents information about their students' mental, emotional, or physical health or well being, unless they have a reason to believe it could lead to abuse, abandonment, or neglect at home. The Florida Commissioner of Education, Manny Diaz Jr., said Wednesday on Twitter, students should be spending their time in school learning core academic subjects, not being force-fed radical gender and sexual ideology. In Florida, we're preserving the right of kids to be kids. I it's, like that. Yeah, that last bit. Force-fed is a great description of what they are doing in the government-run schools, as Alex Newman would call them, government you know, brainwash camps. Um, force fed because they are so i'm glad desantis is doing something i wish other states would do this too or something similar and again notice how they frame it the, the protesters don't say gay we don't don't it, say gay bill right yes in the people who will never actually read the bill yeah. or never did read right, the bill right. when they first took a look at it never read it and the mainstream media just went with it and used the whole don't say gay bill and it says that nowhere anywhere in the entire bill but that's where we're where we at because it is them force feeding in yep. but i like the end of what that man well tweeted i guess about kids being kids because kids need to be kids so that they can become good adults what we have here is we aren't raising kids we're raising adults right we have children who we yeah. are raising to be adults I like that. but except we don't do that because the right of the kids to be kids has been completely stripped from them yeah in the name of sexual ideology always and forever just focus on what your bits are or how you feel not right. what is true right. to who you are yeah how you feel how you identify all of that and how it's you all imagine these, and, and it's they would these these kids would be kids and kids would grow up to be yeah. well-mannered like well-adjusted adults if we weren't focused as the adults always on force feeding like you say this sexual ideology stuff, yeah. the gender or yep. sexual orientation and gender identity and all this, where it's always on them all the time in, in every <sighs> subject in school. Just let the teachers teach core subjects. That's all I'm trying to have happen in schools. And David, I think yeah. you agree with me. Yeah. Let schools be schools and yes. teach. Yeah, we're, they're going to vote on this uh, April 19, uh, which is a really important day on the 
international calendar, uh, someone's birthday. Um, Florida State, they're going to vote. Anyway, in Tallahassee, in cabinet meeting room, LL03, if you needed that detail. But that's for the protesters, right? They put yep. it in there for the protesters. So, they know so where I don't know is. where to go when they're going to vote on this April 19. But uh, Katie, you, did some, you said something interesting. And it reminded me that the left, the cultural Marxists, and those who want to push demonic agendas are trying to reach kids at younger and younger ages. And one word I've been saying an awful lot when I talk about these issues is access. People that are not the parents or immediate family of these children have access to kids in government-run schools across the country for hours and hours throughout the day. And parents have a really, really tough job. And I know you're a young parent. You've got young children. Oh, um, I'm a young parent. You Say are. it again. Say you're it a young time. parent. Young par you're oh, young. I'm a parent of young children. You're a, there. both. You're both. <laughs> um, but, you know, what would our great grandparents say? I say that almost every show, every day, right? Every week at least I say that once. Seriously, though, think about your great grandparents and try to imagine at what age do you think they would if they were actually to give the birds and the bees talk or talk about sexuality and the importance of marriage or whatever with their children at what age do you think that your great grandparents would want to address that well today's parents they're thinking well my my kindergartner is hearing this stuff in school. What am I going to do? Am I not right? Oh, they're hearing it in 4K and yep. some daycares everywhere. Everywhere yep. your children go, whether they're in your home watching a show on YouTube or on the TV, they're hearing all of this nonsense all the time. And the whole point is they need that access. Get them everywhere yep. they are so that when they go to the schools and that it's just normal. Why would you deny it? It's just, it's everywhere. Oh, too yeah. late. Can't do anything about it. We'll just accept it and move on. And we need parents to be parents and actually protect their children so yeah. you can raise them up to be yeah. well-adjusted adults. But, and and mm -hmm. that, whoever that was in the video, that the young woman with the, what, the zebra club, Ze um, she said, I have known, what did she say? Did she hundreds say hundreds? Of, yeah. Hundreds. Let me ask you this. Um, how many LGBTQIA whatever students were there 50 years ago? Ooh, gotcha, didn't I? Because they, the, it was probably accurate to say they're pro they were probably close to zero, maybe a couple, 50 years ago. What happened? What changed? And that's the question we need to ask, and then we need to pursue that. What changed? And that's what we try to do, point these things out on Educated. So still to come, Arkansas, yes, becomes the fourth state in the nation to protect students in public schools from allowing boys to walk into girls' restrooms when they claim to be a girl. That's next. I'm calling it now. David? Yes. Mark this down in history. I'm okay. calling it right now. All right. <clears throat> Sarah Huckabee Sanders okay. will be the first female president of the United States. That's a pretty bold, bold prognostication. I'm big and bold here on today's episode. <laughs> uh, and one of the reasons is because of things like this. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, if you didn't know, Arkansas, as I like to say, uh, she signed a bill last week that had required transgender people to use public school restrooms that align with their biological sex and not their preferred gender identity. Good for her. Thank you, Sarah Huckabee I Sanders. Mean, just Katie, just that headline. Yep. You look at that and you go, huh? Is, can anything be more common sense? Can anything be more, um, why do we need this? It's a shame that we have to go to these measures to protect, do something so natural that's a responsibility of every adult to pr protect children. Well, Chandler Bing. They could be anymore. Could you be, be anymore? anymore? Thank you. Yeah, well, the legislation uh, will apply to multiple or multi-person restrooms, so multiple person restrooms, and locker rooms at pre-kindergarten through 12th grade public and charter schools. The law is not slated to go into effect until later in the summer, but it will be in place 
by the start of this fall school year. So a spokesperson for Sanders explained that the bill was enacted to protect <laughs> children. Oh my gosh, someone out there to protect the children. From what? From what? The woke agenda. The woke agenda. Yes. Uh, Alexa Henning, who is a spokesperson for Sanders, said, the governor has said she will sign laws that focus on protecting and educating our kids, not indoctrinating them, and believes our schools are no place for the radical left's woke agenda. Arkansas isn't going to rewrite the rules of biology just to please a handful of far left advocates. Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Your first female president. Thank you. Saying she's going to, she'll be it. You know, in Arkansas, there once was a young lad who came from that state. He was governor. He Mike Huckabee. Up, no. He, he ended up I as know, president. I, I, I didn't want you to. All right. I, let's watch this video. Very common sense law that will uh, at public schools and public charter schools require girls to go to the girls' room and the boys to go to the boys' bathroom. And those students that are uncomfortable in either one of those will be, will be provided with a uh, separate bathroom for them to use uh, as they need to. Representative Mary Bentley sponsored House Bill 1156, which was signed into law Tuesday. It prohibits transgender people at public and charter schools from using the restroom that matches their gender identity. Bentley says she proposed the bill after her constituents voiced concerns about bathroom safety. A lot of constituents are very concerned about the direction of our nation and our state, and they felt like we we're just, uh, as our governor said, we pretty much gone crazy, and they just really felt it was... Uh, time for us to push back and make sure that we just had some common sense legislation to make sure children are safe. What we need to notice there is that what we're really scared of is not is not trans men or trans women. What we're really scared of is cis men. But we're, we're scared of violence. Megan Tulick of NWA Quality says this law could make those in the LGBTQ plus community feel like they don't belong. Nobody likes to be scared or be scary um, in this bill sense people up to, to have to have that experience, which is, is physically dangerous for them. All right, the graphic. Did you guys notice the graphic underneath everybody talking there? Arkansas restricts restroom use. That's not, that's no not what they're doing. It. Yeah, you look can at still that. go to Arkansas the bathroom, people. Arkansas restricts school bathroom use. How well, dare they, re How dare they, Katie, not let kids go to the bathroom? <sighs> that's what go. the news puts out go. there, right? I have to go. That's what the liberal oh, please, news media, please, whether it's the please. national level or the local level, the level, they are liberal, they are biased, right? They, they put this out there. So watch, when you, when you see a newscast, not only listen to what they're saying, watch that graphic on the bottom. Like, I mean, that one's true right there. I am David Fiorazzo. But, but watch what though? they say. Arkansas, oh, shame on Arkansas. If you were just, if you're at the gym, right, doing something, you saw this up on the screen, you're going, what? Arkansas, Arkansas is restricting school bathroom use? Ah, oh, they shouldn't be doing that. They're not doing that. They just want kids to go to the bathroom that they're supposed to use. Yes, and, and, and the argument always is, yes, they're singling out the transgender students. Every time you allow biological boys to go into a girl's locker room, a girl's bathroom, you are singling out and making it scary and possibly dangerous for half of the population. Females. Actual females. Oh, what's but wrong no, no. With? We must cater to the one, two, three, five students in an entire school who are confused about who they are well there's a lot more we must put growing. aside half of the population all you young females nope we have to do all this for these students who claim to be transgender now the other thing about this is they are going to they're encouraging to have single uh stall restrooms put in we used to, in my day we called them unisex bathrooms and so if a student is claims to be transgender and is uncomfortable going, is a boy uncomfortable going in the boy's bathroom, guess where he goes? In the unisex stall. Done. Over with. End of story. But no, no. Anyway, <laughs> there is a penalty. Mm -hmm. School officials, including superintendents, administrators, and teachers who were found to be in violation of the bill could be fined at least $1,000. I like that. Haha. -ha. And the legislation would also allow parents to file private lawsuits against public and charter schools that break the law. I look forward to, I'm just going to eat, we should have a segment called like popcorn or something where we just sit and watch because it's going to happen. This is going to be an interesting watch because there will be violations. Teachers and, paying fines. Basically. Yeah, it'll be, That's well, and the superintendents called. and all that. Yeah. <laughs> the legislation also, it did pr 
required the public and charter schools to provide these reasonable accommodations for these transgender students. So if you're making the argument that, oh, transgenders are being singled out, they're getting their own bathrooms in essence by having these unisex stalls. Like that's part of it. And some of us would say that's not even reasonable. We shouldn't even be doing that at all, but... This is why she's going to be president of the United States, because she's going to bring independence over. Anyway, wow. I'm, just, I'm just... Take this, mark this video. Mark it down. Save it, hang on to it. it and Send it over to Sarah Huckabee Sanders. I'd who, love to talk to her. Who knows what... <laughs> anyway, who knows coming up, not in Arkansas anymore, but a Massachusetts high school is slammed after winning a girls' state track and field championship with a biological boy on the team. Of course, we're going to talk about that boy who told... <sighs> competing girls to just, you know, deal with it. Jeez. Stay with us. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D, -E EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company. Arkansas. We're, we're not in Arkansas anymore. We're, we're, not, in, we're not in Kansas anymore either. Well, yes. In Arkansas, sanity prevails. In Massachusetts, insanity continues. A Massachusetts high school track team beat out all competition recently and they won the girls' state track and field championships with the help of a transgender athlete, an 11th grade biological male. According to the Daily Mail, Chloe Barnes helped Brookline High School win the state's Interscholastic Athletics Association Division I, which means you're the biggest of the big schools and everyone cares about D1 schools. It was the Indoor Track and Field Championships, and he competed in the girls' 55-meter hurdles, wow. coming in fourth behind his school teammate. Now, Barnes reportedly just began competing in girls' athletics, in grade 11, which he currently is in, and he had already helped the team win the 4 by 200 meter relay back in January. So, it's Massachusetts. State rules allow boys to compete in girls' athletics and vice versa, but interestingly, you know what? We just don't see that. We somehow, 99.9% .9 of the time, have seen the boys competing in the girls' sports why is that david i just don't understand I'm i don't so know could why it, is it only boys competing in girls sports? could it be that athletically biological males have a slight advantage just like, maybe just slight maybe just yeah. slight one. like like specifically for this event the hurdles oh yeah if he was in the boys division it was something like 39 inches or something that they would have to jump over and in the girls division it's like 33 inches but there's no advantage there, right? Cheater. There's no advantage. Cheater. It, he had no, I mean, she, he, she, he. Which one is he, by the way, on, on his 4x200 team? Can you identify which one Yeah, show one that picture of the team, the team picture. There it is. Just um, wondering. Let's see. Is it the shortest one on the left? Yeah, no. the one that looks like. Eh. Yep, yep, yep. Eh. That one. No. no. No, not that one. Okay. Let's see. Well, anyway, the state rules allow it. Uh, as the rules actually specifically state, students who are transgender may participate in accordance with the gender identity they consistently assert at school. Interscholastic athletic activities are addressed through the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association Gender Identity, po identity Policy. <sighs> Clarification. I can't even say that. <clears throat> Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association Gender Identity Policy. Can and I... what's the rule on this show? The longer the title, the more nonsensical it is. Yep, the more woke, mm -hmm. uh, more mm -hmm. often than not. But let me just point something out. It says, students who are transgender may participate in accordance with the gender identity they consistently assert. Meaning you can go back and you can assert something else, but the one you consistently, the, the one you assert Maybe the most. Maybe first quarter year this, and yeah. then second quarter, that's consistent yeah. then if, for if a you're, whole If you're something for three quarters out of four, then then that's the one you consistently yeah. assert. But here's the main, oh, here's the, the madness. main, yeah, the main part of this is uh, back in 2022, Barnes actually told the student newspaper that he had been practicing with the girls team, but he was competing against boys at the time. What? He says, the way he says this just shows you how indoctrinated he is. He says, I'm in an arrangement with my coaches 
where I practice with the girls team but compete on the boys team. It was more a result of me just being afraid of other people watching me race. And then when the high school paper asked him to comment regarding people who want to restrict transgender athletes from, you know, competing on the athletic teams, his response, deal with it. Just deal with it. To which my response is, hey, Barnes, <clears throat> deal with it. Just deal with it. I mean, he's, he's trying to make it so all you girls have to deal with it. Yeah. But you, one lone person who's confused, how about you deal with it? And the rest of the girls get to participate in, like, rightfully so on yeah. their sports team. You know, I wonder if you would say that to the face of uh, parents who had a, a young woman maybe that would be competing for the same races or, or maybe the same scholarship that, you know, people like him would go after. I wonder if they, he would say just deal with it to parents like that. Maybe he'll be Nike's next spokesman. Yeah, well, they're, Deal with it. Geez. Instead of do it, just, just yeah, deal with just it. Just deal with it. All right, just anyway, well, anyway, we're going to just move on because still to come, we discussed how some companies are moving to a four-day work week, but have you ever heard of a nine-day fortnight? What? We're changing the language and the meanings of everything, so we're going to discuss what it's all about next. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. How are employees trying to maintain productivity levels with all these different uh, week work restrictions or work, I guess, changes? The four-day work week, we did a little uh, segment on that a few weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. Um, but now, what about a nine-day, what they're calling, fortnight? A large, successful six-month trial of this working pattern recently ended in the UK. Companies noted increased productivity and more interest from prospective employees while workers say it improved their quality of life. But concerns about factors like profit added uh, pressure for workers due to a higher daily workload and the need to be available to clients during all standard working hours remain. So Sam Franken, he's the CEO of a tech company, Otta, O-T-T-A, adds that cutting a full day seemed like a big step as it cuts working hours by 20%. He said, going from effectively 100% of the time to 80% of the time, I felt like potentially I was going to rock the boat too much. And uh, so is there a middle ground? Enter the nine-day fortnight. Katie, the word fortnight, I admit, when I was first trying reading this, I was thinking, what, what's a Fortnite? Oh, is so that no, a video game? It is a video game, but not the same Fortnite. Okay. The Fortnite we are talking about is an old British term where it would be two weeks, 14 days, a fortnight. Fort. It, yeah. Night. Yeah, Fortnite. So uh, now this new nine-day Fortnite, basically instead of working 10 days as you would on Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday in a fortnight's time, you are now working like five days then you would only have four days the next week. Then you would have five days, and then you have four days the next week. So basically, every other Friday you have off. That's how they're summarizing it. Okay. I personally think certain companies, depending on where you are and what you do, it would be beneficial. Because if you know you have every other Friday off, that's when you schedule appointments. That's when you know I get a breather, I can, mm -hmm. I can have a little bit more work-life balance because I can get things done on that Friday. And then, yes, I will feel more productive and be more productive at work. Instead of every Friday, let's be honest, how many people slack off by noon, right? And you're basically <laughs> missing that half day each Friday then anyway. <laughs> or people, people just, you know, we did the story on the Monday on how Monday is like you're supposed to ease into the Monday. Yeah, don't actually, work so don't hard. Work so hard. Don't so push then, yourself. So then I think it would, and it, it gives just like a, a little bit of a breather. Now, yeah. if you did it every 
Friday you had off, then Thursday would become the new Friday, and then Thursday you would not be doing so much, and then you'd have Friday off anyway. But knowing you have a normal Monday through Friday, and then you have a Monday through Thursday, it gives you that extra, just a little bit extra breathing room to get other things done and have balance. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I think work is good. Work is healthy. I think there are different conditions at different companies that it would depends. make people, yeah. you know, want to do this. But Thursday becoming the new, or the new Friday, is that it? It would, or, like, that's why they're actually saying we don't want it. They're questioning whether we should go every Friday off because then Thursday would become. Yeah. But otherwise, this keeps it more like just that one day might make enough of a tweak so everyone gets what they need out of it. That's good. Then you'd have to change the expression, thank God it's Thursday. There you go, TJIF, TJI, anyway. All right, well, make sure you do hit that like button if you're watching us on social media. And hey, send us your feedback. What are your thoughts on this whole Fortnite thing? For David and myself, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and thank you for supporting this show. Until next time, stay educated.